Hi everyone, my name is Alex Mallon. I'm a student at the University of Washington, and in this video I will be introducing our work, co-first authored with Akari Asai, titled When Not to Trust Language Models, Investigating Effectiveness of Parametric and Non-Parametric Memories. Language models demonstrably encode a wealth of factual information in their parameters. For example, you can go into the OpenAI playground and ask for how many beetle species there are in the world and it will most likely tell you a number around 350,000 and often hint at this number being a lower bound estimate. This is true and can be verified with a quick Google search and then you have the Smithsonian telling us the same thing. But language models are just as capable of producing hallucinations, meaning their outputs often include convincingly asserted factual errors. Here I ask for a list of papers in the literature on beetles and it gives us three reasonable looking papers, but as you've learned to expect by now, all three of these articles are nowhere to be found on the internet. Nevertheless, there aren't any immediately obvious clues that the language model is hallucinating. Despite hallucinations being widely recognized as a key issue in the literature, we currently lack an actionable understanding of when language models are likely to hallucinate. Kadavath et al. proposes that language models usually know what they know, and that you can often fine-tune ahead on the language model to predict whether the language model will be able to answer a question correctly. But this requires fine-tuning a probe on model activations, which aren't even always available. So we take a different approach. To begin to investigate some predictors of factual knowledge, we create a new dataset, PopQA, which focuses on atomic forms of factual knowledge grounded to Wikidata. Using a knowledge triple format consisting of subject, relationship type, and object, we say that a model memorizes the knowledge if it can correctly generate the target object given the subject and relationship. We formulate this as an open domain QA task, where we convert such knowledge triples into natural language questions as shown here. Now, crucially for our analysis, each question is tied to a subject entity popularity, which has not been considered in prior analysis. Popularity of an entity is defined as the number of monthly page views of its Wikipedia page. Our hypothesis is that factual knowledge about popular entities can be more easily memorized than factual knowledge about less popular entities. So, in this example, the former knowledge triple is less likely to be memorized by the language model because the subject, Kathy Saltzman, is not well known compared to Barack Obama. And it turns out that yes, factual accuracy is predicted by popularity. This chart shows that Pearson correlation between accuracy and log popularity of the subject entity as positive for a wide range of models and relationship types. Now, given that scaling has made significant progress on many hard problems, some might reasonably ask, won't scaling solve language models' factual unreliability? We find that scaling does improve performance, but primarily by improving memorization of more popular entities, and it fails to appreciably improve memorization in the tails for foreseeable model scales. Notice in the graph here that for questions about the least popular entities, shown in blue, the improvement in memorization caused by model scale is near zero. Instead, scaling's effect on language model knowledge is better understood as shifting down a sort of soft threshold on popularity above which the language model is likely to have memorized the fact. What about retrieval? Will retrieving documents from the web and including them in the language model context help with tail performance, where scaling has been shown ineffective? And this simple retrieval-based prompting indeed gives us huge performance improvements across models, especially smaller language models. In particular, 1.3 billion parameter GPT-Neo with retrieval can beat the vanilla GPT-3. More and more recent papers also confirm such trends across different knowledge-intensive tasks. Now, we've been talking about parametric and non-parametric memories separately, but our paper cr crucially also focuses on how they complement each other. And one of our main findings is shown in this slide, where we have a graph showing PopQA accuracy of GPT-3 versus the subject entity popularity, with and without retrieved passages. Notice how retrieval is especially helpful for questions about tail entities. This makes sense, as there may be gaps in the language model's parametric knowledge that can be remedied with non-parametric augmentation using large and grounded web corpora. However, also notice that the use of retrieved documents is actually harmful for questions about the most popular entities. 
Based on this, we propose adaptive retrieval. The idea naturally follows. Compute a threshold subject entity popularity, below which we will use retrieval, and above which we won't. There are a few more details to the method, which I invite you to attend the talk to hear in full. This actually gives us large improvements on stronger language models, as they've already memorized a lot, so avoiding unnecessary knowledge retrieval indeed gives us benefits. This also reduces the inference time latency as well as the API cost. For more scaling results and more fine-grained mechanistic view of how popularity, relationship type, scale, and retrieval all play into language model factual knowledge, come see our main conference oral presentation.